Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reviewing the Urban Decay 20th Anniversary Vice Limited Reloaded Palette. This palette has been about in the US for a while now, but it is only just released in the UK a few weeks ago, along with the Moondust palette. So I was really, really looking forward to this and I was really unsure whether they were going to actually release this in the UK. So I'm glad they have, because it's a really amazing palette. It has a mix of a really nice classic Old, uh, old school Urban Decay shadows that I remember from years and years ago and along with some newer shades as well. So this is what the shadows look like. We are going to get up close and personal. I'm going to show you the packaging and then I'm going to go into swatches and I'm also going to swatch using a brush and also um, using my finger as well so you can see the two different types of swatches and how pigmented these shadows are. Um, I don't use primer in any of my swatches because I like to swatch them on bare skin just to see how well they perform but I would advise with Urban Decay eyeshadows especially to use a primer. I tend to use a primer with all of my eyeshadows but when I initially swatch them I like to see how well they perform on bare skin but they would definitely perform even better over a primer. So before I get into telling you what I think about this palette, let's get up close and personal with the packaging and also let's get into the swatches as well. The outer packaging for this palette is really beautiful. It's got this really nice beautiful pattern with lots of different pinky purple hues to it. It's really, really lovely. And the Urban Decay logo here is raised. And then it's just got the 20th anniversary Vice Reloaded just here. And then when you turn this out packaging around, you have a little blurb here telling you about the palette itself and some of the eyeshadows in it. And then also you can see all of the eyeshadows that are included. The palette itself is really, really lovely. It's a matte black on the front and it kind of reminds me of the Spectrum palette. And it also has like this purple jewel toned raised Urban Decay logo here, which is really lovely. It captures the light beautifully. And then here is the back, this is more of a shinier finish, so a little bit more prone to fingerprints, but this just has your ingredients list on the back here. And the palette itself is a nice size, even though it is a bigger palette, it is still quite thin, so it's not super super bulky like the old style Urban Decay palettes. Think through the looking glass, that's the most recent one that's come out in the old style packaging. So I really do like this plastic packaging because I feel like it does take a lot up a lot less room. One of the other things I love about this palette is it does include this push button here. This featured on the older Vice palettes, but it was not on the Vice 4. You just lifted that open. It's just a really nice feature. You just push it open and your palette opens up. I'm gonna point this mirror down so I don't blind you, but this is a really nice sized mirror. Let me just show you from this angle. And of course it is hinged so it doesn't fall all the way back. It does stay up. So that's really, really cool for doing your makeup in. Then of course you have your 20 eyeshadows and you also have this little brush here. Let me just take it out of its wrapping. So on the one side, you've got this almost stiffer like blending brush, or I guess you could use this to place colors onto the lid. And on the other side, you've got this longer, fluffier blending brush here. Okay, firstly we have Suspend. Suspend is a greyish brown matte and this is a limited edition shade. We then have Oil Slick and this is an older shade from Urban Decay. This is a black matte with silver micro glitter. It is in the permanent range I believe, but it was also featured in the Urban Decay NYC palette. The third shade is Road Stripe and this is a limited edition shade. It is an iridescent white with a violet blue shift. Then we have Gash, this is a classic. This is also a limited edition shade, I believe. I don't think you can get this as a single, but it is a metallic brick red and it is absolutely beautiful. The last shade in this row is Midnight Cowboy, another Urban Decay classic. This is a pink champagne with a shimmer silver micro glitter and this is also in the permanent range. We're moving on to the second row now. This is 501. It is a deep metallic blue with a copper micro glitter and this is a limited edition shade. The next shade is Shallow. This is a pale taupe silver satin and again this is limited edition. Then we have Laced. This I believe is in the permanent range and this is a pinky taupe matte. The next shade is Hot Pants and this is a pearly medium pink and this is a limited edition shade. The final shade is Mildew and again this is another Urban Decay classic. This is a deep metallic green shimmer, it is a permanent shade and it also featured in the Urban Decay NYC palette. This next shade is Smog and this is a huge favourite. This is from the permanent range so if you are only interested in buying this shadow instead of the rest of the palette you can go and buy this individually. This is a deep coppery bronze shimmer. It also featured in the Urban Decay NYC palette 
and it also features in the Naked palette. This next shade here is called a Misdemeanor and this is another older shade from Urban Decay. It is a deep olive green matte with a green micro shimmer. It is a limited shade and this did feature in the Book of Shadows Volume 2 which I believe came out around nine or so years ago. The next shade is called Freak Show and this is a limited shade. It is a bright purple satin. The next shade is from the Permanent range and this is Asphyxia and it is a hyacinth shimmer with a blue shift. The next shade is Acid Rain. This is a pale yellow green shimmer with a green shift. Moving on to the fourth and final row now. This shade is called Moonflower and it is metallic rose gold with a gold micro shimmer and this is from the Permanent range. The next shade is called UVB and this is a classic and it is a bright blue with a violet shift and this is limited edition. The next shade is Gold Mine and it is a bright metallic gold and it is also limited edition and exclusive to this palette. The next shade is Twice Baked and this shadow isn't coming up true to colour on camera whatsoever. It doesn't look like it is here anyway. It looks a lot cooler on my viewfinder than it does in real life. It's a lot richer and warmer. And Twice Baked is another classic. It's a rich brown satin with a gold micro glitter and this also featured in the Book of Shadows 2 and also in the Alice in Wonderland palette as the Mad Hatter, the original Alice in Wonderland palette. And then the final shade in the palette is Anonymous and this is a pale peachy cream matte shade. Okay, so I'm going to start swatching the shades on my arm and I'm going to start with a finger swatch. So the finger swatch is always going to be on the left and then I'm going to also swatch with a brush and that's going to be on the right.
So the day I recorded that, it was a funny light and some of those shadows didn't tend to come up true to colour, I feel, on camera. And those colours were Misdemeanor, which is this one here. I feel like this is way more true to colour now. And gold mine was another one. I felt like that was slightly washed out. And also twice baked. Anyway, now you guys have seen these swatches, I have to say that I feel like these shadows perform really well in general. I felt like Mr. Mina was a bit of a letdown and I do remember that shade being a bit of a nightmare to use before as well. Um, I just felt like it comes off patchy and it's nowhere near as pigmented as that beautiful colour that you see in this palette. So that was a bit of a letdown. The shadows themselves I feel like really smooth and buttery, like even the ones with sparkle in them there's like a slight bit of texture but they're not overly overly gritty. The only thing with the fact that they are that soft and buttery is that they do tend to have a lot of fallout and that can lead to making a mess and I know that powdery eyeshadows or eyeshadows with fallout is a deal breaker for some people. I personally don't mind it as long as the shadows are pigmented. I would just advise maybe doing your foundation after you apply the eyeshadows if you're really worried about it or you can just powder under your eyes like I do and it should just wick away with um, a fluffy brush. I like to use a dual fibre brush from Real Techniques. I've never had much of a use for these but I really like using them for making away eyeshadow so that's what I keep those for. In general I would say probably the best performing shades in here are, um, I think Laced is a really good performing shade for a matte and also the, the shimmery shades all perform really really well. Like this gold mine shade is just incredible. It's a really really unique shadow. It's really really nice. And Gasha is probably my favourite shadow in this palette. I can't wait to play around with more of these colourful shades and I probably will put a video up using those. I just wanted to go for something a little bit more neutral for today and um, especially as I was recording my Kat Von D video as well and I just feel like the shades I've used from this palette really complement this lipstick. I think if you're someone who, are, who is into more neutral shades and this probably isn't the palette for you, it's quite an expensive palette so I would say to maybe look at the Naked palettes if you don't have any of those. The only thing I would like to have seen, and it doesn't bother me too much because I do have other neutral palettes that I can use, such as the Naked Basics or something like that, but I would like to have seen a dark brown matte in here just for the crease area. I did use Twice Baked and it actually doesn't look too bad in my crease at all, but I, um, I would have liked a dark brown shade for the crease. But that's just a personal thing for me and like I said it doesn't really bother me too much because I have other palettes that I can grab a dark brown shade from but I think in, in the cases of travelling or something that would have been nice. I do like the selection of matte shades in this palette, I think they perform really really nicely. Uh, Laced was a really nice transition shade for me and Suspend is just a really nicely pigmented grey taupey colour and it's so buttery and soft really really into that. I'm not sure how many more Vice palettes they're going to come out with. I don't even know if they're going to come out with one for Christmas because they've got a whole different line going on for Christmas, concentrating on the Vice lipsticks etc. So I don't know if this is just going to be the last Vice palette maybe because they have kind of come out with a lot and I'm not sure where they would go with them. Um, but we'll see, you know, you never know with Urban Decay. All in all, I really really like this and if you are interested in getting some of the classic shades from Urban Decay that are no longer available anymore, then definitely go and check this out. And when we will close up with this, I did mention which shades were permanent and which shades were limited edition, so if there are only a couple of shades or just one shade that you like from this palette overall and you don't really want to spend a whole bunch of money on one palette for one shade, and that's why I mentioned which shades were permanent, so if you just wanted to go and get a single and I mentioned that it was permanent, then you can definitely go and order that online or go into your local Debenhams, House of Fraser, and I believe Selfridges carry up and decay now as well, so. So yeah, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of up close and personal look at the Urban Decay palette. Um, I don't really have that many cons for it except the fact that I'd like a darker matte brown shadow and the fact that Misdemeanor could perform a lot better. But overall, really, really impressed. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video helpful in some way and I shall see you in my next video.